Welcome to Marshall Myths, presented by the United States Marshalls Museum. I am David Kennedy, museum curator. In this episode, I will talk about the tragedy at Going Snake. This falls under the status of Line of Duty. The tragedy at Going Snake was many things. It was a fight between factions within the Cherokee Nation. It was a feud between the Proctor and Beck families. It was a conflict of federal and tribal jurisdictions. It was also the biggest, bloodiest gunfight in the history of the American West and the deadliest day in the history of the United States Marshals. April 15, 1872, at a small schoolhouse in Going Snake District of the Cherokee Nation. Most events of the late morning are still uncertain and contested. We do know the district sheriff moved the murder trial of Ezekiel Proctor from his home near Christie Indian Territory to the nearby Whitmire School that morning. Two deputy United States Marshals and their posse arrived at the location and shooting began. By the next day, eight members of the posse, including Deputy U.S. Marshal Jacob Owens, were dead and several others were wounded. Three participants in the court proceedings were known to have been killed, the defense attorney among them. At least six further combatants, including the defendant and the judge, were wounded. The majority of the dead and injured on both sides of the fight were Cherokee. Many events led to what happened in the Going Snake District of the Cherokee Nation. The expansion of United States federal authority, establishment of Fort Smith as a military post and later as the location of a U.S. District Court, and the passing of the Removal Act established an often confrontational relationship between federal and tribal authorities. Within the Cherokee tribe, factions supporting and opposing relocation to the Indian Territory engaged in violence against each other during the 1830s and 40s and supported opposing sides of the American Civil War. The tensions were still present in the 1870s. On a family level, the Proctors and the Becks, though related in many ways, were moving in different directions. The Proctors supported Cherokee self-determination and tradition, while the Becks were more open to a changing Cherokee nation. The events of February 13, 1872 seemed minor at the time. Ezekiel Proctor, a deputy sheriff in Going Snake District, visited the Hildebrand Mill on Flint Creek. Although the reasons given vary by source, we know that Zeke attempted to shoot James Kesterson and also shot and killed his Cherokee wife, Polly Beck. Zeke turned himself in to the Going Snake District Sheriff. The Cherokee tribe then began criminal proceedings for the murder of Polly Beck. Expecting it would be nothing more than a show trial, the Beck family used all possible legal means to prevent an expected verdict of not guilty, going so far as to attempt to suspend the judge, Black Hawk Six Killer. On April 11th, Kesterson appeared before the U.S. Commissioner in Fort Smith in order to swear out a warrant against Zeke for assault with intent to kill. Under the treaty, the Cherokee Nation had the jurisdiction to try their own citizens for crimes against other Cherokee. Also, under Cherokee law, U.S. citizens who, like Kesterson and Mary Cherokee, were adopted as Cherokee citizens with full rights. Yet the U.S. District Court in Fort Smith, while acknowledging Kesterson's marriage, seemed to ignore both the tribal status accorded to him and the sovereignty of the Cherokee Nation. Regardless of the reasoning, the court ordered the marshals to pursue Proctor, and Deputy U.S. Marshals Owens and Peavy were given the directive to arrest Proctor for the charge and left Fort Smith on the 14th. Taking a sizable posse, numbering at least 13, the deputies started out on the Fayetteville Road and took the branch to Evansville, Arkansas, staying overnight there. The next day, they continued on to Dutchtown before crossing into Indian Territory. Following the barren fork of the Illinois River, the posse arrived at the Whitmire Plantation about 11 in the morning. While court sessions had been held at the sheriff's home over the previous weeks, the session for April 15, 1872 was held at the local one-room schoolhouse. By most descriptions, this building was a log construction with one door and at least two windows. The posse is believed to have learned of this change at the Whitmire home and left for the school shortly thereafter, traveling a distance of less than a mile. With the resulting tally of more than 21 dead and wounded between the two sides, it is not surprising that the term massacre has been applied to the event which followed. The immediate result of the fight was the dispatch of a large posse led by Deputy U.S. Marshal Charles F. Robinson with a warrant for Proctor and many of the participants of the events at the schoolhouse. Most of the members of the court party had gone into hiding after acquitting Proctor. The Cherokee tribe responded by filing warrants for the surviving members of the initial Marshal's posse. After a congressional investigation and discussions with the Cherokee leadership, President Grant directed the Department of Justice to drop the entire matter. There are still questions about the events at both the mill and the schoolhouse. Additional questions remain about the reasoning behind the court's pursuit of Proctor. These are issues which have not seen resolution, but hopefully through time and discussion we can find answers. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the tragedy at Going Snake. If you have a question about this video or have a martial myth you would like explored, please contact the museum by following the links below. Thank you for watching.